G'day, g'day, Rolling Rumbles. I'm not doing a fake accent. Today, we're going to talk about something called a consensus filter is what those people that seem to always believe what other people believe go through before they actually adopt a belief. See, most people are dumb, dumb sheep. <clears throat> most people have secondhand opinions some other person expressed and they adopt because they think they have to or they think they have to have an opinion on something. Therefore, why not adopt this one that my friends agree with or the people around me agree with so that I minimize the amount of friction that is caused. See, most people do not want to cause friction. Most people do not want to get involved in any sort of adversarial way with other people if they can help it. Because in general, over the course of human history, adversarial encounters with other people is very dangerous. Um, obviously, it's not quite the same now. If you get in a verbal argument with someone, you're not necessarily going to end up dead. You know, if you're a caveman, you might. You know, if you uh, have a conflict with someone, you could very easily end up with your skull cracked and, and dead, and that'd be the end of it. But obviously, we're not all cavemen anymore, so that's not really a thing. But you've been conditioned over the course of hundreds of thousands of years of human evolution to think that it's really dangerous to get in a fight with someone because for a long time that's been the way it is. And it can still be. In fact, look at modern cancel culture. What's dangerous about cancel culture? Well, I mean, for me, not much because there's not much to cancel. What are you going to do? You going to get all my customers to stop coming to me? Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, go ahead. Try that. Good luck. Good luck, buddy. You'll never find them all. You'll never even find most of them. So, uh, ha, good luck. But for most people, that all of their income comes from one source, and that one source is controlled by other people. And those other people can, on a whim, decide that they don't want to employ them anymore, and suddenly you go from five grand a month or whatever to zero. And when that happens, guess what? You're unemployed. Now, if you have a family, guess what? Your family's at risk. <laughs> There's a lot of risk that's taken if you make the mistake of doing something as simple as expressing the wrong opinion today on the internet. You know, if you say the wrong thing, you could get fired from your job, even though it had nothing to do with your job. So yeah, in a way, today, it still is very dangerous to run your mouth and put your opinions out there. Because you don't know if your entire livelihood will be ripped out from under you. Uh, consequently, I just want to go on the record by saying that while my beliefs can't be expressed on YouTube, I do think that if someone takes your livelihood away from you, um, they deserve to suffer consequences at your hands. And you can, uh, you can, you can figure out the rest, you know, of course, Sometimes it's probably not worth the trouble that it takes to exact those consequences, but there you go. Anyway, you, you take away a man's um, you take away a man's money, you, you take away his money. But you take away his stone, you take away his ability to make money. Uh, some Bible thing, whatever. <clears throat> so a consensus filter is a protection mechanism that a whole lot of dumb dumb sheep read normal people, especially, default Democrat, default Republican, normal people who just do what the people around them do. By the way, this would explain why big cities often, very often, have massive Democrat voter bases. Because if everyone around you is a Democrat, it's dangerous to express Republican opinions. Therefore, why would you? Why would you be a Republican in a place where it would be dangerous for you, uh, potentially? So a consensus filter is where in your decision making, you do not ask, is this correct? What supports it? The first thing you ask is, will other people around me think that this is okay? Yeah, I told you. I told you that's what it feels like with a lot of people. They don't think about whether or not something is true or right. They think about whether or not other people around them would agree. And if they will, they just go along with it. This is uh, sort of the classic Nazi, um, the thing about the Nazis saying, well, we were just doing our jobs. Well, yeah, but, you know, you, you could have chosen to go against the regime and get shot in the head. But 
obviously the consequences can be that they can feel almost that severe if you live in a place that has very strong leanings about any issue and you express some sort of controversial opinion, controversial in that area because it's become a monoculture of ideas. Or if the people in your workplace think one way and you go, I think different, uh, suddenly you might be shunned. You might find that they go out of their way to make your work life miserable through indirect means. And it takes a pretty strong person to not adopt a consensus filter, to not think about what other people think before forming their own opinions. See, the thing is, the consensus filter is basically easy mode. If I just believe what other people believe, then I don't have to worry about risks because other people believe it, so they're not gonna take any action against me. If I believe something different, from what other people around me believe, then there's a, there's a higher risk, so why bother? You don't have to think about it. You don't have to analyze it. You don't have to gather evidence. You don't have to do any work at all. You just hear the opinion and you adopt the opinion. And you walk away and you, you just repeat it without caring. It's like you adopt this entire ideology just because other people have put it into you because you don't want to put any effort into being your own person. You don't want to make waves. Well, okay. And that's why there are so many problems in the entire world. Because the world has fallen into the consensus filter being most people's default. Because it used to be, there, there was a golden time when I was young where you could be different. And in fact, being different was celebrated. Now, the only different that's celebrated is if you're different in the same ways. <laughs> you have to be, basically, it's like the goth kids in South Park where they were like, if you want to be nonconformist, you just have to listen to the same music as us and wear the same clothes as us and hang out in the same places as us. That's all. That's the way the world is today. Arguably, that's also the way the world used to be quite some time ago, you know, 40s, 50s, whatever. <clears throat> it was a lot more like that in the more distant past. You know, that horrible past where, um, where racism reigned supreme, you know, before the Civil Rights Act, when everybody, by default, was required to think ill of black people based on their race. Because guess what? If you were that white guy or white girl that provided some sort of support in view of some other white guy that was actually a racist, well, now you are a target because, you know, you're a, you're a, a, a what do you call it, um, an, an N-word lover, shall we say. Um, but you get the idea. It, it, it's like cancel culture today is basically like racism culture in the South in the early 60s, you know, and then or in the Jim Crow era, whatever. Take your pick. But it, it, we've sort of reverted into that, that same high stakes society somehow, despite information being freer than ever. Uh, generally speaking, the, uh, the, the information has the ability to be freer than ever, even though the reach is greatly restricted because large tech corporations don't want you to know certain things. The consensus filter really has a lot to do with the big tech filter bubble, social media filter bubble. What's well, a filter bubble? If you don't know, filter bubble is where when you go to any website, um, any remotely modern social or search or whatever site, they tailor what they present to you based on previous behaviors of yours. So if you watch certain YouTube videos, like let's, let's, say, um, let's say you watch a YouTube video about Minecraft, well suddenly YouTube starts bombing you with Minecraft videos in your suggestions. <clears throat> it's not that you like Minecraft, it's that they saw you watched a Minecraft video. And because you watched one Minecraft video, and most people who watch a Minecraft video would be interested in a lot more based on their heuristics, um, you get more Minecraft videos. That's sort of a filter bubble. If you watch certain personalities that are known to be left or right wing, then you will get more videos recommended to you by similar personalities uh, or in similar veins that other people who like those people also like. In this way, big tech starts to make it so all you see is stuff that you agree with. 
stuff that you like. You are never forced to watch ideas that conflict with yours. You are never forced to see what other people think if that isn't comfy for you. And so the filter bubble sort of plays into this, uh, this notion of a consensus filter. Because if you have a filter bubble showing you the same things, and you, you're, you may, if you get sent a video or two by people who are in this um, consensus filter enabling environment with you, um, you get sent a video or two that's, let's say, politically left wing. Well, YouTube now knows that you want to watch that because, hey, you watched that video, so you must want more of it. It reinforces the consensus filter through the filter bubble. When we talk about people being NPCs, non-playable characters, if you're not aware, it's a role-playing game thing usually where <clears throat> you have people in the game that you can't play and that don't have any direct tie into the story or whatever, um, but that just sort of exist. They stand around and they say things, um, they give you things, whatever, to help you move through the story. Um, an NPC does not have any sort of real story or anything built up. There's not really much to it. Um, they're just pre-programmed with uh, a small set of responses, and that's it. And the notion of an NPC in an actual human being, it, the whole idea is that you're programmed. You don't really have any sort of original thinking um, you're programmed to respond in a certain way, and that's just the end of that. Hold on just a moment. There's all these woo-woos right here. I'm not sure what's going on, but woo-woo. Uh, anyway. So, the filter bubble... <coughs> uh, what was I saying? God. The NPCs... Um, the idea of an NPC in a human being is uh, reinforced by the consensus filter in the filter bubble. There are a majority, I would say, of people out there who have no original thoughts at all. They adopt everything that other people feed them and that is reinforced by people around them. So it, it's sort of like nothing new ever gets thrown into the pot. Instead, um, things that just happen to fall in bounce around back and forth and stay in there, and nothing new ever gets fed into it. So you have this stuff that just organically reinforces itself. Whatever gets injected into this into this pile, um, especially if a couple of people happen to manipulate things to make sure that those things that were injected uh, are are continually reinforced. You know, like the media uh, repeating a bunch of lies. You, know, you get the idea. It's just it becomes this ideological monoculture that's locked in a loop of repeating its own the programming that it just happened to have been dropped into. So, <clears throat> there you go. NPCs, filter bubbles, and ultimately the consensus filter in thinking explained. That's going to be it for me. I'm going to sit at this intersection for the next year. And uh, while I do that and rot in the hell that is this place, like, comment, subscribe. You know the drill. Thanks for watching and take care.